And a little over a week into a five-week campaign, and Julia Spillard has touched down in the far north. She is the official doppelganger of the Prime Minister of Australia, and I'm delighted to welcome her to the studio. Miss Spillard, good morning. Oh, it's wonderful to be here in Cairns, uh, where... Well, it's well documented that everything wants to bite you or stab you or sting you, and it's a lot like Canberra, <laughs> only a little bit more moist. So you're feeling at home then? I am feeling at home, especially, yes. And what brings you to the final, you know, quite early on in the campaign? Well, we all know the seat of Leichhardt is a pivotal uh, seat in the campaign, and I'm here to announce that the Cairns Cultural Precinct will be a processing uh, facility for genuine asylum seekers. We have the facilities for the boats there. I believe P&O uh, have been approached, and uh, their uh, genuine asylum seekers will be shown in an Australian film, shown in an Australian band, and then if they're ready, given a piece of Vegemite toast. And if they don't pull a face, then they're ready to be interviewed integrated into the Australian society. Now, what sort of response are you getting to this proposal to turn the cultural precinct into a processing centre? Well, all the asylum seekers are for it. They've heard that this is a centre for the cultural rim culturally. Uh, we, they've heard that I'm going to change the name of Christmas Island to It's Not Very Nice Here Island to divert the people wanting to meet Santa or go to Christmas Island just to get presents. And what are you hearing from the people? What are the people telling you about this particular proposal? Well, the people are telling me that $240 million has been promised for the cultural precinct and that uh, Warren Inch, or Saint Inch as I like to call him, Saint Inch is uh, wanting to uh, uh, split that money up into a number of projects and we, we feel that so, uh, the government that I lead, the unreal government that I lead, uh, feel that this, this would not be of service to uh, the cultural precinct, which has been established by the people, the community of Cairns. Would it still be used as a cultural precinct as well, alongside a processing centre? What we will be offering is people to come in and choose a genuine asylum seeker to bill it and integrate them into society the way Australians feel fit. If you have a question for Miss Spillard this morning, our number is 1300 801 We will be building a great big water slide from Coranda all the way down into the Smithfield water ski pond. Wow, that'll be quite a ride. Well, that's a big vote winner, I believe. Everybody cheers for that. <laughs> and uh, the, the campaign slogan, moving forward, I mean, where do you want to move Australia too? Well, we're moving Australia forward closer to the Arctic. Uh, that's why it's a little bit colder at the moment. That's for a number of reasons. Uh, one is to escape global warming. The other is to fool the people smugglers because they can't bring people here if we've moved. How are you planning on doing that? Well, I've met with a number of swimming teachers around Cairns and they know how to get the little kiddies kicking against the side of the pool. I don't see why that couldn't work at the northern tip of Australia. And uh, last night's debate, yes. how did you see it? Well, I won uh, quite uh, well, the worm chose. And I also came to Cairns and had a worm of people following me around Cairns. In fact, I flashed Cairns, so to speak, uh, walking around Cairns in my trench coat, being followed by uh, security and insecurity. We had some emos following us around. <laughs> and, and what do you say to the commentators who say there was no knockout blow, that it really was a, a lacklustre debate? Well, what I'd like to say to the people of Cairns, to the people of Australia, to the, to the voters of life, is why are there no Tony Abbott impersonators? Is it because they don't see a future in it? Our number is 1300 801 222 if you'd like to ask Ms Spillard a question this morning. And uh, Karen at Wongetti has a question. Good morning, Karen. Oh, good morning and good morning, PM. Um, look, I'd like to say um, I think that's a wonderful idea to put the asylum seekers into the cultural precinct, but I think to make it cost effective, we should get them to build it. And then they could feel all nice and warm and fuzzy saying that they were actually part of the building of a cultural precinct. Well, I don't want to take work away from uh, the people of Cairns who need work and that's why I will be announcing Quirk for the Dole where if you are on the Dole and you have a unique party skill or ability uh, we want to use that to serve the nation and w might I say that Warren Getty is also uh, part of my unreal Australia. Well, thank God for that. I thought we, we weren't even recognised on the 
face of the map. Thank you, Prime Minister. <laughs> well, uh, I, I don't believe in God, but I do believe in Warren Getty. Oh, well, thank you, Prime Minister. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. What else are you offering people? Uh, let's talk about uh, taxes. Well, uh, my government has it. Uh, my unreal government has identified a way to fill the $1.5 billion hole left by the negotiations with the mines, and that is to tax Kyle Sandilands, the shock jock. I understand he's going through a bit of a hard time at the moment, divorcing from his glamorous Dancing with the Stars wife. And our number is 1300 uh, Any other f messages that you want to impart to your constituents in far north Queensland? Well, yes, I would like to respond to the people who say that I don't know what it's like to be in a family. Look, I grew up in a family, I was part of a family, and that was enough for me. <laughs> I am, in a way, uh, as a, the first female Prime Minister of Australia, in a way, the mother of the Australian people, and they are, in a way, my kids, and I want the best for my kids, I want the best education, I want the best health care, and I want to give them Maccas because I'm too tired to cook. Do you think gender will play a part in this campaign? Well, boys' germs. That's all I have to say about that. Uh, what happens in the green room stays in the green room uh, as far as gender. You can imagine me getting my hair cut by Tim in my lingerie, but I will take to the grave with me uh, what goes on with my uh, hairstylist slash bloke I see on the weekend. <laughs> and what about your relationship with the, with the opposition leader? I mean, there's been some talk that you, you know, I don't think it's any secret that you do get along, that perhaps there's even some sparks. Well, like. there's sparks whenever Tony's trying to flirt, I must say. Look, I'm only human, but what I have identified is he's got a particular technique uh, where, for example, in his Liberal Party ad at the moment, he's saying... Stand up Australia, yet by the end of it he's saying he won't stand for it. So that's mixed messages, and I'd just like to say to the people of Australia that that's the way he flirts. Fred in Cairns, good morning. Uh, good morning. I have a question for the uh, Prime Minister. Yes, I'm the unreal PM, go ahead. I would like to know why you have to buy preference votes from another party to get elected. The people that I lead, the unreal people of Australia, uh, know that we cannot work in a hierarchy anymore, that we must work as a self-sustaining matrix. Uh, we have to all pull our socks up and work together. Uh, and so uh, everybody gets together and uh, shares, I think, uh, in, in the unreal Australia that I lead. Max, I don't know the reason for your question, but I do appreciate it. Fred, well, thanks. Well, the great idea of the question is, I believe that any party should get in there on its own merits and it should not be buying votes from another party to get elected. Yes, that's right. Well, that happens in the real world. Uh, however, uh, I lead an unreal government with unreal people, so uh, that's not an issue for my government or the government that I lead. Fred, thanks for your call this morning. And uh, Ms Billard, just on the issue of the, the consensus you're seeking on climate change, the idea of having this, uh, this gathering mm. in 2012 to talk about climate change, haven't we talked about it enough already? Well, uh, it's still an issue, so we're still talking about it. But the government that I lead, the unreal government that I lead, is going to take genuine asylum seekers and get them making ice cubes for the Tuya, East Tuya Marians, uh, thereby uh, affecting global warming by cooling it down with the making of ice. And it, with that, in that spirit, we in the Arctic, we've got an Australian territory. We will have uh, genuine asylum seekers. They're making icebergs making a better life for themselves and their kids, a safer life for themselves and their kids actually as long as they're careful on the slippery ice of course. And just before you go any uh, final comments for Look, the I, listeners? I would like to say that I'm unreal and I want you to be unreal Australians and I lead an Australia Australia with us at the front, Australia with us in it, Australia that is unreal.